I've decided to attempt something that I've never done before. I'm gonna be doing seven videos in seven days and I'm gonna be documenting everything that I get up to as an eBay seller. Now, today being Monday, we've just got two very, very important tasks to tick off. And the first one is gonna be the shipping. We need to send off all of the weekend sales that came through and then we need to go out and do some thrifting to try and find 15 very good quality listings that Courtney when she turns up at 11 o'clock can get stuck into. So. It's nine o'clock right now. We're gonna, I've looked out all of the sales. We'll go through a few of those a little later, but we're gonna go out now and do some thrifting and try and get ahead of the game nice and early. First item of the day, guys, we had these Brooks Cascadia 14s, I think they are, US size 12. It was just the condition that made me leave these ones behind. A big heel burn there on both feet. Even at $6 worth of a purchase price, I just had to leave behind based on that condition. Now, I'm swinging the golf clubs a little bit, guys, but uh, I had to leave these behind on the personal. The brand Axiom just wasn't a good one from what I was seeing on eBay. Uh, and this one here as well, we've got Springfield, um, I should say the Simpsons board game for $4. Uh, I went ahead and picked this one up. It actually converts into some decent money. I should be able to get about $40 to $50 for this thing. Um, social media as well for small business. So I picked this up. Courtney's done really well with her books lately. Um, so for three, it should turn into about 20 to $25. So $7, two items were underway. I had a bit of a look to see what the most expensive Simpsons board game was, and it was actually the Treehouse of Horrors edition of Monopoly. So Simpsons Monopoly, Treehouse of Horror, going for about $175 in pre-owned condition. So while this Simpsons board game that I've picked up for $4 is a pretty cool find, that's the one you want to be finding. Now, I thought I'd absolutely struck gold here with Battlestar Galactica. It was only $9, but it only goes for 18 on eBay, so I had to leave it behind. A place to call home. I've gone ahead and picked this up, complete series 1 to 6, 10 into about 45, so that was excellent. And then I found a bunch of records hiding in the cabinet behind the counter. This Stevie Nicks one right in the middle there, that was going for about $45, but at $22 worth of a purchase price, unfortunately there just wasn't going to be enough margin. There were a few other records um, out on the shelf as well. These had only just come in. Like as the second that I was in, they were landing on the shelf. So I had first look at all of these. Um, but unfortunately, uh, so the op shop ladies, they had a bit of a look on eBay and uh, they, they were all worth about 20 to $30 and they were pricing them anywhere between $7 to $12. So when you do the numbers, unfortunately there's just no wiggle room to find any profit. So I've gonna had to obviously leave all of these behind. I spent a bit of time to do my comps and I came away empty handed. So not too bad guys, a place to call home, $45, buying it for $10, there should be some good profit in that. I, I had a look at those vinyl records and there were some good ones in there, but unfortunately not quite enough profit. It, it did get me thinking though about a series that I'd like to try on this channel, which is actually going out and sourcing a category or different categories that I just don't typically sell. For the last three years, I've always done shoes, clothes, books, DVDs, and video games. That's kind of where I've focused my attention the entire time. And there's so many other profitable categories out there. So if you've had success in a certain category that I have never sourced or never tried to sell before, it could be phones, it could be cameras, um, it could be pins, um, I, I don't know, literally anything, guys. Um, let me know, and what I'll do is I'll collate uh, some categories out of the comments, and uh, I'll create a poll. And then I'll put the poll up, and whatever the top category is, I'll make a video on trying to flip that category for a profit. I think it could be a fun series. It's gonna be cool for me to kind of educate myself and, and hopefully educate you guys uh, on what to look for in certain categories. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you'd like me to try and flip. We're gonna call it Thrift Busters. All right guys, we put a members video out last Friday and I went over to mum and dad's place because they're selling their place and they said, Matt, we've got a bunch of old stuff that you used to use back when you were a kid. And this was one of them. This is the Sony Cybershot camera. Uh, I plugged it in and tested the battery. I put it into the, the Sony charger that came along with it uh, and it all worked fine. So I listed it up, checking the comps on eBay and it ended up selling for $100. So just out of that, just literally running over to mum and dad's place, finding some loose stuff lying around the house um, we got $100 on the very same day for this item. So there are a bunch of other uh, items that I found in that video. There's another sale that I'm about to show you as well, but it was a members video and I do one of them every single month. It's $4.99 and if you wanna join in, um, you can check out that video because there was a bunch of cool finds in there. All right, this was the next one as well. This was the Pokemon Emerald version. Um, so this was a, an old Game Boy Advance game. So this actually was in the box that came along with the Sony camera. And I was shocked. There was actually three I've got um, where are they? There's this one here. 
So these two came along with it. So we had Pokemon Sapphire and we had Pokemon Leaf Green. Now I think Pokemon Leaf Green's worth about 200. Sapphire's worth 100. And this one here, we sold on a best offer, same day, just like the camera, for $189. So again, I haven't paid anything for these. These are my old video games when I was a kid. Uh, and there's $500 worth of Pokemon games right there. And this one has sold instantly. These have got a bunch of watches uh, on them as well. And they're all genuine. They're all Australian versions as well. So I, I, was, I was blown away. Oh, and this was the third sale that we had for over $100. We've got the Ultimate Fighter. Um, so this is a really cool series. This was se uh, season three through to season 10. Um, so it's only a sort of a part set. Uh, $125 though is what we ended up selling it for. It was a domestic sale, so it's going somewhere in Australia. We're gonna probably put this one in a box, I reckon, Courtney. Yeah. Um, put it in a box with some bubble wrap and some butcher's paper. And that should be no more than about $12 to $15 worth of postage. Um, so that means that we sell it for about $112. Uh, I bought this in the video store buyout as well. So um, these were pretty much a dollar each. So there was about $9 you know, into, the, into the deal and it turned into $112 plus postage worth of the sale price. So cool sale, three really good sales. And then we just had a few other bits and pieces that sold for a bit less in value, uh, but still cool to see them come through. All right, so Courtney's working away on all of the other items, but I uh, just thought I'd quickly run them through. That we bought only the other day. This was the, um, the hey, Courtney, how do we pronounce this? Rolled? Ronald Dahl? No, not Ronald. Oh, Royald. Oh. Royald. No, no, no. Rowed. 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 See, guys, this is why we say Ronald. It's just easier to say. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that series um, sold 15 book set, complete set, sold for $45, so that was really cool. A um, couple of items going out in the uh, boxes today, which is always a little more time to do, but some items you just have to do it. Courtney's going to go ahead and scratch off the flammable liquid as well. We just want to make sure that that doesn't get sent in the post because it often gets bounced back. Um, we've got some PS1 games in here. We've got a, a rock action figure, some comic books, some shoes, some more books. I'm placing more of a focus around the books since Courtney's been... So you sold quite a few items over the weekend. Yeah, I sold like four books. Four books? Yeah. yeah, so Courtney's been doing really well in the book category. So I'm, uh, I'm looking for books myself. So we've got those. They are all going into an envelope as well. Um, I've just got to run out and get a few more boxes for Courtney because um, she's going to need them in a second. <laughs> I feel like I live in this place. I have been finding it really hard this year to maintain 20 listings a day. And that's something that I want to kind of show throughout the seven days of this series is just how tricky it is to find the quality stock that you need when you're just relying on thrift stores and flea markets and things like that. I don't have any wholesale connections. I don't use any wholesale suppliers um, to boost my numbers of stock. Um, and, and that's mainly done because I've got this YouTube channel and I really want to document what somebody else could go, go out and naturally do. Um, so I've always kind of held my numbers to be anywhere between sort of 10 to 20 listings a day. We had this big eBay store buyout back in January and that's when I decided with Courtney coming on board that we'd level it up to 20 listings. But once we work through all of those listings, which was pretty much January, February and March, I found April, May and June to be really hard when you're just relying on thrift stores to find 20 listings a day. It's actually a very difficult thing. Uh, a lot of these op shops are very, very overpriced um, and you can't actually find you know, a decent amount of profit. And you also just don't want to be buying anything and everything either. Um, you know, because that's not going to be a good way to actually get it to sell. There's going to be some bad sell-through rates in there with a lot of the items that you see. So it's, it's, a, it's a real fine line. You want to get it right, but to find that volume, I have really battled with and so much so that we've pulled it back to 15 listings. Um, and I'm even finding 15 listings a day is, is a hard quantity. Um, not to do, I'm happy to list up that quantity of items. You know, obviously having Courtney, that's a no-brainer. That's very easy. But finding 105 every week, that's the tricky part. So if you want to be full-time, I really do think that you should be focusing on wholesale connections if you possibly can, or just some other form of consistent stock supply uh, because you don't want to be commuting from A, B, A, from A to B to C just like I have um, for the last three years because you're only going to be a sort of 10 to 15 listing a day sort of a seller and, uh, and you're going to be wasting more time than you need to. It is very, very tricky out in these thrift stores. This is one reason why it's, uh, it's difficult, guys, the price points. These Echo shoes here, they're, they're a youth size as well, 48 
dollars. Are you kidding me? I've also got these as well. Decent pair of shoes. Sacconi, pretty good brand, but for $38 with a bunch of heel burn, that was nasty. These were okay. That was some Birkenstocks for $25. I was umming and ahhing. I had these in my hand for quite a while, but then I asked you guys. I put the um, I put the Birkenstocks up on my Instagram as a story. And 17% uh, said to go ahead and cop them. 83% said to drop. So I had to leave them. Usually around lunchtime, I'll have lunch. Makes sense. But I'll also go ahead and do some finances as well. That's a bit of a priority. Um, I, I just look over the numbers, reconcile everything in the online software that I use, which is zero for my account keeping. Um, and then I'll go ahead and, and make sure that I pay Courtney as well. Uh, she gets paid every single Monday. So um, that's something that I definitely do. But I also start to upload the what's sold that we would typically do, which you've already obviously seen. Uh, I'll start uploading that into the uh, the editing software that I use. The, the editing software is actually called uh, OpenShot. It's no good. I wouldn't recommend it if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel. Um, I really wish I went with one of the, the bigger boys. Um, I've got a pretty basic um, use of this. Uh, software service. It's a free service that I just downloaded way back when, three years ago when I started on uh, on YouTube. But um, I still to this day use it just because it's something that I just know like the back of my hand and I can create videos fairly quickly. Um, but here it is here. We've got the grid and I start to kind of pull the the the, um, the files out of the computer and, uh, and I start editing away and that will take about four to six hours for a rough draft and then a couple of hours to kind of fine tune it. Uh, and then within about eight hours, that video is ready to go. Now, doing this vlog series, I'm really kind of nervous being two o'clock now in the afternoon. Um, I feel like I need to get a head start on it because I'm going to be doing this every day for seven days. Um, so maybe the edit will be five to six hours. Um, you know, it be a, a little bit less than, than the two to three videos that I typically do each week. So while Courtney goes ahead and absolutely crushes the post, I'm going to dive back into the thrift because we need more listings. Listings? is priority number one. I found these. These are a pair of LeBron James basketball shoes. They were $18, not too bad, but then again, there's been a lot of heel burn on these shoes today. So I'm gonna had to uh, leave them behind, unfortunately. That was a tough leave. I love those shoes. Um, in the DVD section, that's where I can typically have some luck. I found this one, which I thought was really good. This is Hail and Pace. I've actually got four seasons amongst all of these, seven through to 10. And they go for about $40 collectively. Uh, this one as well, Sweeney Sweeney 2, that one was going for about $20 to $30. Um, so all up there, you're looking at about $70 worth of value and we're only paying $9 to get our hands on it. So look, it's a small little allocation. It's not a heap of listings, but there's some good money. Now, this, ne this next stop shop that we're going into, I actually had some very good luck last time around. We found a bunch of designer clothing, Yeezy, Supreme, Mad Happy, Acme Studios. I'll link the video in the description below if you haven't if you haven't seen it. But tomorrow, in tomorrow's vlog, I'm actually, I'm linking up with a vintage seller, a vintage clothing seller, and she's just gonna assess all of the items that I found and determine whether or not they are authentic or not. And I'm gonna bring it to you in tomorrow's vlog. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. That is gonna be a very, very interesting episode. Would have loved to have had the same result as that uh, designer clothing haul, but it was just this one item here, the ASICS GT1000s. We should get about $50 for these. The condition is actually really quite good. Um, so to get them for a steal in store was a nice one to round out the day. So guys, I don't know if you picked up on that, but throughout this video, there was actually only six items that I was able to buy out of the thrift. And I probably went into six or seven different thrift stores. So really tough picking today, a lot of high prices. It is a tough world out there. And if we're gonna try and achieve 105 listings this week in this little vlog series, uh, I'm gonna have to do something different. I can't rely on the thrift stores. So I'm gonna be reaching out to Facebook Marketplace uh, and trying to do a bit there, um, try and take some really cool grabs, which I think will make for a pretty par interesting part of the video series. Um, Courtney's done really well today. I've obviously been out and about running around, but she's been madly listing and she's been doing all of the shipping. So um, this little stash here is a little allocation that she's been working on. Uh, a couple of the items that obviously we picked up today in there as well. So they're live, ready to be sold. Um, it, it's, it's been a, a good day. I, I go to the gym at five o'clock. Um, I'm training for a marathon at the moment. So, uh, it's a really good detachment from work for me to go to the gym at five. Um, so I did that for an hour and then Monday nights we do family dinner nights and it was over at my sister's place. 
Um, so I was, I, was, I was around there for about an hour. So right now I'm at the point now where it's, what, what are we, 9 p.m. at night. Um, done all the tasks for the day, but I really want to get this video series rolling. So I'm in the process of just finishing it off now and um, we'll be straight back into filming again tomorrow. So if you're interested in selling on eBay, guys, hit the subscribe button because like I said, there's plenty more content coming this week. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm energized. I'm feeling motivated. Can't wait to make tomorrow's video. Big, actually, big, big video tomorrow because we're going to go and get that, that clothing authenticated. We'll bring you those results then. See you soon.